Here's the new 32-bit LXMOS controller, all wired up. Two IMUs configured. The frame IMU is connected to the top plate here. Within the um, uh, LXMOS settings, you can specify whether the frame IMU is sitting below the yaw motor or above it. If you place it above it, you're going to have to rely on using the slip rings to hook up the four I2C uh, wires that go to the frame uh, IMU. And one of the problems with that is that the frame IMU is also a pass-through for the um, camera IMU. See how there's two I2C cables coming off the back of that um, frame IMU. One of them goes to the um, the camera IMU. So you'd not only have to have wires going up through the motor to that IMU, but also back down through the motor to the IMU that's connected to the uh, camera. So that's a problem in itself. It also does say on the Alex Moss um, uh, PDF manual that um, over a period of time you will lose accuracy by ha having the frame IMU placed above the uh, your motor instead of below it um, but then you don't get the benefit of um, accurate um, your tracking and having said that the your tracking on this um, gimbal control board is actually pretty good I've been walking around the house and it has still pretty much stuck to that one heading without changing no matter what I've been doing around the house like walking around doing um, rotations turning around again and again and again always comes back the same um, compass heading it's almost like it's got a magnetometer in it why they don't use a magnetometer I don't know anyhow so that's how it's hooked up you've got a mammoth wire that comes off um, I do see wire that comes off that um, frame IMU goes all the way down here and all the way back up. I've decided to do something slightly different here. Instead of mounting the camera IMU on top of the camera, I've actually placed it on the um, one of the side supports here. So that's uh, facing upwards with the cable dangling directly down. Now that's actually working pretty well. Um, if you have a look in the the settings here. Let's see if I can zoom in and focus. The uh, camera IMU is currently set to axis top minus Y and right is minus Z. So with it facing sideways on the gimbal and pointing upwards with the cable dangling down like that. So it's on one of the supports underneath. And you've got the camera screw underneath there. It's kind of out of the way. It's, it's like a, a fairly solid mount point. And I've only used one very thin piece of um, double-sided tape to stick it on there just to minimise you know, the softness that can cause the uh, feedback loop, the vibrations. That's working quite well with that configuration. I just sort of work out a way to get all this ITC cable out of the way because there's so much of it. It's almost like uh, 40 to 50 centimeters of cable they've provided with this, um, this unit, which is quite good. It's nice having the extra cable, but uh, I've got to bunch it up and tie it off somewhere. but it's actually working pretty well. But one thing I really love about this board is that it's got um, a uh, what do they call this? Satellite receiver, this Spectrum satellite receiver support built into it. So I can take the satellite receiver that I've got, plug it straight into the satellite receiver port, the three pin port that's just here, and it works straight off the bat. So I've actually got my Spectrum um, transmitter talking to it at the moment. Um, I'll just pick that up, focus in on that. 
So yeah, I've got it rigged up to handle your pitch and your 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 your. That works really well. Very happy with that. So we've got it all nicely tuned for the um, the three axis gimbal. It's got the 155 12 millimeter grommeted damper interface at the top there. Got the two axis um, mount with the third axis motor mounted underneath it, underneath that interface. And the board connects to the back here. And I'm, I'm using um, ferrite rings at the moment just as a safeguard to make sure that I'm not getting any um, electrical noise that's going to interfere with the functioning of the board. Now, whether that makes a difference or not, I don't know. Um, and I've got the, the UBEC attached to the front side of the accessories tray at the back there. And it's actually got a spare lead here which isn't connected to anything at the moment. Um, this spare 12 volt out can go into a um, video transmitter and the video transmitter can be stuck on here. So like a, a complete solution would be to have the HDMI to AB um, board connected to the side there feeding its um, video out to a video transmitter here. Um, there's probably enough room on the front here to put an OSD or maybe the IOSD mini. Uh, so have your video transmitter there. Maybe even um, a, a video switch that lets you switch it between the um, the optional FPV camera mount and the um, video out of the camera itself. So yeah, you could have a complete solution here. But yeah, going back to this um, uh, satellite receiver, th the brilliance of that is that you've only got that one set of wires going in there. You don't have multiple wires that you need to feed to a separate um, receiver. That one receiver is doing everything. It's obviously feeding, um, you know, maybe whatever serial protocol it uses straight into the board. Um, in the software itself, you just select, uh, in my case, you select um, virtual channel uh, 3 for pitch and virtual channel 2 for your, but that's using the right hand gimbal that's on my um, Spectrum DX6i. So if you wanted to use the left hand gimbal, I'd just assume you use virtual channel 1 and 4. So that's very cool.